All right, I'm here with Bill McCormick with uh, CK Capital, and he's gonna talk to us a little bit about the um, reverse mortgage short sale. We're hearing a lot about that now, so he's gonna explain a little bit about that. But um, first, Bill, tell us about what is a short sale? Yeah, Earl, um, short sale's been around forever. Um, CK Capital Management, we've been facilitating for over 20 years now, so they're not new. But basically, a short sale is this. A homeowner um, owes their mortgage lender more than the current market value of the home, okay? Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, they have a, they have a mortgage that's that's uh, at three hundred thousand, but uh, due to the condition of the property, um, they can only sell it for two hundred seventy five thousand. So short by definition is the homeowner does not have enough money to pay the loan in full plus pay all the all their closing fees. So they're short of a full payoff. Okay. Okay. But in order to qualify for a short sale there has to be some type of demonstrated financial hardship, all right? Mm -hmm. So in this market, you know, we've had a lot of equity over these last few years. So you may have a distressed homeowner that maybe lost their job or they're getting divorced and they can't afford the mortgage payment. Oh yeah. Right? But, but if there's equity, all right, they're not a short sale. It's really when they're upside down on the mortgage. So what we're seeing now, Earl, is folks that have bought in the last couple years, they got into a competitive situation, mm -hmm. paid fifty thousand dollars above appraised value, and you know here we are two and a half years later, and they never thought they were going to lose their job. They never thought someone was going to get sick. They never thought they were going to get divorced. So you have people that overpaid in the last two years now have to sell. But you know the reality is the you know the market the values are starting to you know plateau a little bit. In some cases, areas they've come down. So that's why there are always going to be short sales, mm -hmm. right? It's just a cycle in the market. We haven't had as many in the last two years just because of the increase in the property values across the country. What's the benefit to the seller to do a short sale over a foreclosure? Yeah, we get asked that a lot, yeah. right? So um, in a foreclosure situation, right, depending on what state you're in, but let's, let's say Pennsylvania and Delaware, okay? Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Delaware, the foreclosure process has to go through the courts. So it's a judicial process. So in order for Bank of America to foreclose on you, I can't do that unless I hire a local attorney. Mm -hmm. The local attorney goes into the courthouse and files what's called a list pendants, Latin for pending litigation, okay? It then has to go through the court system in order to for, the, uh, for Bank of America to legally take the property back. Because Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they don't own the home, they own the mortgage note. The mortgage note is secured by the asset, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that I didn't pay my mortgage and I put my head in the sand and I just walked away and let the bank foreclose, okay? So if Bank of America forecloses on me, right, and my mortgage is $300,000, once they take that property back at an auction or they sell that property at an auction to a third party investor, which okay. happens a lot, yep. okay? Once they sell that, all right, at that point, all right, they've completed the foreclosure process. So if my loan obligation was $300,000, they put a judgment against me for $300,000, mm -hmm. okay? Once I have that judgment against me, okay, I can't go get a car loan, all right, it's gonna be very difficult. I can't get a Lowe's credit card, right? It's gonna be very difficult. I certainly won't be able to get a mortgage. Depending on what mortgage lender or credit specialist you talk to, Earl, most say that if you have a foreclosure on your credit, you're looking at anywhere from five to seven years, mm -hmm. bankruptcy, seven years. And the reason that a homeowner would want to do a short sale versus let it foreclose, um, the majority of the lenders now, they have boilerplate language in their short sale approval letters, Earl, and one is they agree to report the debt as settled. And the key word there is settled. Settled means that the lender is agreeing to take less than what's owed, right, and allow me to settle my debt and walk away. Because they are willing to take less and I'm working with them so they don't have to foreclose on me, all right, they report that debt is settled. So what that means is if my debt is settled, all right, typically what local mortgage people tell us, two and a half to three years, you can go get a new mortgage. Oh, that's great, right? right. yeah. And the other thing that they, they include in their approval letters is they agree to waive the deficiency balance. So let's say uh, I had a loan with Wells Fargo, I did a short sale, and the shortfall amount was 75 grand, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Well, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, all the, the, the big three, all right, they put boilerplate language in their approval letter that says, we agree to waive the deficiency balance, okay? And another benefit, not a lot of homeowners know this, is, you know, in a short sale, there aren't any proceeds. Homeowners not walking away with money. In a short sale, the Bank of America's of the world will pay all the homeowners closing fees. Oh, wow. They'll pay their realtor commission, they'll pay their transfer tax, they'll pay their attorney's fees. All right, so the homeowner is not writing a check for any of their customary closing fees. So that's, you know, if you put your head in the sand and you get a judgment against you, they can attach your wages. In Delaware, for an example, those judgments remain in public record, record for 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's really- So it come back to bite you for a while. Without a doubt, yeah. without yeah. a doubt. Okay, well, how does that relate to a reverse mortgage? Do you want to tell us a little bit about a reverse mortgage and how that uh, relates to a short sale or um, uh, might become a short sale? Yeah, yeah, and when you and I were first talking about this, um, you were saying, hey, I'm hearing more about mm -hmm. reverse mortgage short sales. And, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, and, and we're seeing that on our end too, Earl, and we have a number of them that we're negotiating right now. Okay. And, and basically, um, the reverse mortgages, all right, um, they're known as home equity conversion mortgages. Okay. So um, a homeowner um, can tap into their equity today, all right, and, and we'll talk about how they can get that money, but they can tap in their equity today, all right, um, and, and use that to live on. And typically what we see is we have an aging population okay mm -hmm. and think about you know where we've been in this last year and a half we have 40 year high inflation right and um, if I'm on a fixed income I'm paying more for gas I'm paying more for electric I'm paying more more for my bacon paying more for my eggs right I'm paying more for taxes now and all of a sudden I'm not living my money okay and these homeowners look at their house and say wow I've got all this equity I can tap in today so typically what we see is it's definitely um, uh, an older homeowner and in order to qualify for a reverse mortgage you got to be a minimum of 62 years old okay 62 years is is the minimum but basically what they do is um, the homeowner can tap into the home equity conversion mortgage and they take out their equity and the homeowners have typically three options all right so let's say i have three hundred thousand dollars in equity that i can tap into okay um i go to my I, I go to my reverse mortgage company and say i'd like to take out a reverse mortgage and they say okay they do all their work and say all right bill congratulations you have three hundred thousand dollars in equity you can tap into today how do you want the money mm -hmm. and they offer it to homeowners in three different ways one is lump sum okay the second uh, 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 option is a line of credit. So we'll give you $300,000 line of credit and you use it as you wish. And the third option is, um, instead of us giving you a lump sum today, what the reverse mortgage company says is, hey, we will give you, for an example, $1,500 a month for the next X number of years until you utilize all of that $300,000, oh, okay? okay? So, and, and the reason that I say it, it's more of a, an older borrower, because number one, you have to be 62, all right? I'm 58, so I know what old is. Oh, you look good. All right, thank yeah. you, thank you. Look <laughs> sure. um, 62, but what happens is human nature, okay? And, and the way I, I, the analogy I use is, think of it like you hit the lottery, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Do you want 1.2 billion over the next 30 years, or do you want 500 million today, mm -hmm. all right? Human nature, as most people say, Give me the 500 million today, yeah. right? Yeah. But here's what happens, okay? All right, um, there's a trigger point, and the trigger point is when the homeowner is no longer in the home, okay? And that happens in, in one of two ways. It's either death or, or, the, or the homeowner has to go into assisted living. They no longer occupy Oh, home, yeah, right? which we're seeing a lot of. Yeah, and yeah. that's the trigger. But, but what happens is, human nature is what we see is, the homeowners are taking a lump sum, okay? So they take out 300 grand. Now again, all right, they're really trying to live the rest of their life comfortably because if they are on a fixed income, they're living longer and they're realizing, man, I didn't save enough money. That's the unfortunate thing here. Um, the good news is people are living longer. The yeah. unfortunate thing is they're out living their money, right? So I can either choose to take the equity out and, and live comfortably or I can continue to struggle on my fixed income 
and let my kids have the equity when I pass away, mm -hmm. right? Because of that, all right, a lot of the homeowners that do reverse mortgages, they don't let their kids know. When I say kids, adult children, yeah. they don't let them know that they're financially struggling, right? They're, they're too proud. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let the kids figure it out when I'm dead, all right? But um, so what they typically do is they take out the lump sum, get paid 300 grand, and then what happens? Life gets in the way. This, this, this child needs help with their wedding. This child needs help going to college. This child needs help buying a car. And they go through the money, right? So here's the trigger, okay? Um, the first thing is that, let's say mom passed away years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. Dad recently passed away, all right? So there's a death event. So basically what happens is that the reverse mortgage company, usually it's within about a six month window because they'll get notified of the death, death yes. certificate. Usually within six months, when they know the home is no longer occupied, that's when the terms of the reverse mortgage kick in. You have to sell the property, okay? And that's when the adult children get inside of mom and dad's finances and realize, oh, there is no equity here. Mom and dad already tapped into it, okay? The second thing is, let's say, um, dad passed away years ago, all right, but now we have to put mom in assisted living. Well, and again, I'm not an attorney, all right, and so just let's be clear there. Yeah. But, but what our experience is, is the adult children are putting mom in assisted living. They can't get Medicaid for mom until they sell all the assets. Oh, you, you have to get all the assets. Worth. Yeah. And then they yeah. find out yeah. that, oh, mom took all the equity out. So those are the two trigger points, all right? It's, it's, it's typically when the house is no longer occupied, that's when the trigger point goes in. We have had scenarios where uh, an aging homeowner um, has, has a, a, a medical uh, issue, meaning let's say they're in a wheelchair and they can't get upstairs, all right? So it's more of a medical issue. The, the reverse mortgage company will allow them to still sell the property as a short sale, okay, if they occupy the home because they can no longer maintain the home mm. due, to, due to the fiscal issue. Okay. So what are some of the things that we should be looking for or questions that we should be asking when we're talking to our clients or things that maybe even um, uh, our clients could be aware of? Yeah, and that's, that's um, one of the things that we say to realtors all the time is that um, in, in reverse mortgage situations, okay, um, a lot of it is almost like detective work, okay? Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is that if mom and dad pass away or go into assisted living, you have the adult children that are starting to go through mom and dad's financials. And they don't necessarily even know, right, until they start digging through the paperwork and things like that. So they're coming, this, coming at this from the outside in. And if they're coming in from the outside in, they may not know all the financial detail that, that you would basically need to do your job, all right? So one of the things that I would ask is, um, or suggest is, hey, look, you know, um, if, if, there, if you identify that it is a reverse mortgage, right? And the easiest way to tell that, Earl, is, is to get a title search. Yeah. You don't need... Which we can do, yeah. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and they're not that hard to get, but you don't need to pay for a whole title search. Mm -hmm. You only need a present owner or an M&J search all you're looking for is mortgages and judgments on okay. title against those individuals. You don't need the whole history, right? But um, majority of these reverse mortgages are backed by housing and urban development. They're HUD backed loans. So let's say I had a, a $400,000 mortgage and it was with Bank of America, mm -hmm. okay? And I did a reverse mortgage, all right? What you would see on title is you would see my $400,000 mortgage with Bank of America you'd see an identical $400,000 mortgage with housing urban development. Oh, okay. okay. So it looks like there's two identical mortgages recorded on title, but basically what happens is um, whoever the reverse mortgage, the servicing for the reverse mortgage is, they will pay off the, the one mortgage and then release the lien from housing urban development. Oh, okay. okay. All right. The that regardless on how they take the money, whether it's the, the lump sum, the line of credit, or the the payout over the years. Exactly right. Okay. Because you know, as long as it's spent and there's no proceeds, there's nothing left, that's how they would do it. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that's and there are some some reverse mortgages that are not HUD backed. Okay. But the other thing you want to look at, and, and it, it's pretty simple, 
um, is, is what who's who is sending them a mortgage statement. There's companies now called Reverse Mortgage Solutions, Reverse Mortgage Funding. That's the tell, okay? Champion Mortgage has mm -hmm. been um, a, a longtime provider of, of reverse mortgages. So when you see where it's not Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, and you see it's reverse funding or you know one of those, that that's the real kicker. You can say, okay, this is probably a reverse mortgage because it says reverse mortgage. Yeah. But the easiest tell is if if they're if the adult children aren't really sure, the title search will show will show both. Yep. That's okay. the easiest way. Um, how does a reverse mortgage short sale differ than a regular short sale? Um, okay, so so again, we already talked about the, the value of the home yes. being less than what can be paid off in full. So the yes. scenarios are the same, but in a in a traditional short sale, all right, you're a seller, I'm a buyer. Okay, Bank of America is going to take the loss. So you and I sign a contract. That contract is subject to Bank of America approving it because Bank of America is the one taking the loss. Oh yeah, okay. The one that's the short. But but in a traditional short sale. Bank of America has you as a seller, me as a buyer, a listing agent, a buyer's agent, an attorney office. All, everybody has to sign an arm's length affidavit. Uh, okay, yeah. so there's no relationships between buyer and seller. I'm not buying the house and going to keep you in the property. Okay, it's a truly an arm's length transaction. So, but in a reverse mortgage, all right, if it's HUD back. Right? And this is the unique thing about reverse mortgage short sales versus traditional short sales. In reverse mortgage short sales, they actually allow a family member to buy the property. Oh, wow. At the discounted price. So let's say I owe 400 on my mortgage, right? My reverse mortgage. Market value is only 275 today. All right. Well, I can buy it for 275 all right, and get, you know, I don't, I'm not paying full value and still get mom and dad's property. Over the years, we've had a number of family members buy mom and dad's property, live in the property, and keep the property in the family. Conversely, we've had um, where, where it's, it's an estate, mom and dad die, and they find out it's a reverse mortgage, but there's no value in the state. But a family member says, hey, you know what? I can actually fix this house up, buy it at the discount price, bring it up, fix it up, bring it up to market value, and sell it for a profit. All right, housing urban development does not care. The, the one caveat is that whoever is the executor of the estate, all right, they cannot be the one purchasing it. It has to be another family member. So the executor of the estate can't be the purchaser. All right? oh, okay. They have to be different. So let me give you an example. Um, my wife, Denise, and I, and you know Denise, I yes. uh, just did a short sale down in uh, Easton, Maryland. And there was a young guy, um, super great story, young guy, he was um, uh, a, a sports um, trainer um, at the Y, the local Y. And they were uh, selling grandmom's house, all right? And adult, the adult mom, his mom, all right, got, got, it, got involved, realized grandma took out a reverse mortgage. And through the conversation, Denise said to mom, you know, do you have any family members? Mom was the executor. Do you have any family members that, that would like to buy this house? She said, well, my son, he works at the Y, all right? He doesn't make a lot of money at the Y, yeah, right? Yeah. But he goes, he gets qualified, and he buys grandmom's house. That that house has been the family over thirty years. But as grandmom aged, right, she lived a long, long, great life. But she outlived her money, so she took the equity out, and he was able to buy the house. Um, what it just a, such a great story that they're able to keep it. The the yeah, the that's awesome. Accounts. But yeah, but you know the 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 identical things is they pay the closing fees, right? There's no obligation after the fact. Okay. But the difference is is the key difference is it does not have to be an arm's length, all right? The only other thing, and you know this, but for those that are watching, in an estate sale, okay, an estate sale, whether it's a regular sale or a reverse mortgage short sale or an estate short sale, the heirs need to sign the paperwork, right? If there's three brothers and they're all heirs, they need to sign the listing agreement. They where they are. On. Yeah, exactly you gotta right. find them anywhere. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> hunt them down, you gotta hunt them down. But that's just a little you know, advice that we give because you know, whenever there's an estate, or even you know, the adult children reverse mortgage, someone's getting involved in it. You know, if mom and dad are still alive and it's not an estate sale, you don't have to worry about it. 
you know, when mom and dad pass away, and if you are doing a reverse mortgage short sale, you make, better make sure you know, identify who all the heirs are. Okay. Okay. Um, what are your costs? How do, how do you, uh, is there any fees to ZK Capital? How does that work? Yeah, Earl, we, we get paid out of the transaction. Yep. So we typically have a standard flat 3% fee, mm -hmm. okay? So we'll negotiate all the lien, you know, any, any type of lien that's on the property, whether it be the mortgages, um, IRS liens, state of revenue liens, HOA condo dues. So we negotiate all those away. So we get paid out of the transaction. Now, as I said earlier, in a short sale, the mortgage company for the seller pays the realtor commission yes. transfer. All the major attorneys, costs. title companies, big fees, yeah. and we're actually paid on the the buy side. All right, but the buyers can get either a credit or adjust their offer down to account for our fee. So it should be a wash to the buyer, no money out of the seller's pocket, and maximizes realtor commission. Okay, is there anything else you think we need to know as far as a, as short sales? Or as a consumer, um, what, uh, how long does the process take for a regular short sale? And if that differs with a, um, uh, a reverse mortgage short sale? Yeah, th that's a really good point. Um, I will tell you, reverse mortgage short sales, they're, they're not that, that long, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you have the two scenarios, in death, okay? Mm -hmm. With death, um, you need to provide death certificate and proof of executorship, okay? If, um, and obviously ID the heirs, okay? Yes, yeah. And with, with the assisted living, it's more about the, the Medicaid. So, you know, in a regular short sale, the, the homeowner needs to prove to the lender why they can no longer afford the mortgage. Yes. They've lost their job, they're getting divorced, somebody got sick or somebody passed away. So that's a financial life event, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what we'll do is we'll help those homeowners that are doing traditional short sales gather that information. Just like when you get a mortgage, you provide pay stubs and bank statements to prove that you can afford the mortgage. But typically what we're seeing, Earl, is um, on reverse mortgages, um, because they're HUD back, I mean, sometimes we're getting them done as little as three weeks, oh, wow. up to about 45 days. Traditional regular short sales um, are, are typically anywhere from 30 to about 60 days, mm -hmm. usually. There's not as many of them out there, so that timeline has really come down. Uh, over the years, but from a from a if you are taking it on from a listing agent perspective, I mean your job doesn't really change, right? You're going to secure the listing agreement, you're going to um, execute a sales contract, all right? The one unique thing about reverse mortgage short sales is eventually the mortgage company, all right, for the seller, the reverse mortgage company, they're going to go and they are going to complete an appraisal on the property, okay? Um, and what they do is they come back and they will accept an offer at 95% of appraised value, okay? So because it's housing urban development, if it's housing urban development back, they'll come out and let's say it's listed at, at 400 and you have an offer at 385. Whatever they come out and appraise it at, all right, they will take an offer at 95% of that appraised value. Okay. So it's not a net. So it's really just a calculation. So, you know, a lot of times you may have a buyer that comes in and maybe it's not, uh, you know, the, 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 the total top dollar amount that you're looking for, but due to the market, due to the condition of the property, that's the best offer you got, right? So you go, okay, let, let's, take, let's take a run at it. Um, and you submit it. So the, the mortgage company potentially could counter, but once they do that appraise, appraisal, Earl, 95%, now you know what price they need to be approved. So okay. most times, you know, if we're involved in, in the transaction, we'll try and educate the buyer's agent and the buyer um, as much as possible, say, hey, look, here's the process, okay? We're gonna submit all, all the paperwork, proof of death, proof of executorship, you know, mm -hmm. the success or failure at that point comes down to what do they appraise it at and what's the buyer willing to pay, okay? And just the, and the reason I say 95% of appraised value, it's not about what they owe anymore, all right? And if someone is, is aging, they can't necessarily keep the house in mm -hmm. top condition. So it does fall into disrepair. So there is going to be some sweat equity in a lot of these properties. And that's why they're, they're so desirable out there in the market, you know? Um, the only last thing I would say, Earl, is we get asked all the time, you know, how do I find them? How do I find reverse mortgages, right? 
Um, and I mean, there are a number of, of you know, uh, data companies you can go out and you can buy, you can plug in 62 years old, you can plug in, you know, um, uh, different parameters and they can spit you out a list of potential reverse mortgages that you could market to, reverse mortgage clients. Um, I would say the easiest way is to tap in your sphere of influence, mm. okay? Talk to your estate attorneys, all right? Um, because if the family members are involved, they have an estate attorney, they get inside of it and find out, I mean, it's mom, reverse, right? It's yeah. a reverse mortgage. The estate attorneys are gonna say, well, you probably just need to sell the property. So that's number one. And uh, number two is is your accounts, all right? Because again, if someone's getting involved in mom and dad's financials, they're gonna most likely ask their accountant for help because there's estate taxes, there are all sorts of things that they have to start to think about. So I'd say primarily estate attorneys, all right? And, and accountants are a great source of referral, all right, that you can already tap into your existing sphere of influence. That's that's in lieu of buying a database of of course yeah damage. yeah these are the way that we can kind of talk to people we already know and mm -hmm. try to see you know who might need some help absolutely absolutely okay well this is Bill McCormick with CK Capital and gave us the lowdown on reverse mortgages and short sales so if you guys have any questions you can either reach out to me personally or I'll put some information together here for uh, Bill as well thanks everybody thank you.